In this episode, home fixing hacks. Ever you have a problem where you're trying to hammer in a nail and the nail is too damn short for your fingers, you end up like hitting your fingers. Ow, I just got my bloody finger then. You, you get the idea. <laughs> anyway, so a good solution is to actually find either a bobby pin or like a peg, depending on the size of your nail. You just simply side the nail into the bobby pin like that, and that's going to hold your nail in place for you while you hammer. That way, you can just take out the bobby pin and just continue hammering. There you go. So say you have a spanner that doesn't fit your bolt and you don't have any other kind of spanners around, just find a combination of coins or one coin depending on the size of your spanner and you just slide it in to the gap. So as you can see, it fits my bolt very nicely and I can move it around easily. And there you go. That is the solution and moving on. Voila. So say you don't even have a spanner, what are you going to do? Well, quick solution is to just get a nut and bolt. You want to put it together and then you can adjust it to the size of your bolt, tighten it up and that will act as a spanner and you can use it just like that. Boom! Shaka laka laka laka. There we go, new one for you. So this one is for all you handy people out there, okay? So I have here a really long nail sticking out of a piece of wood that I need to get out. Now it's a little bit difficult to get out. Why? Because it is too long and as you can see, if you force it like a lot, it may bend the nail. So the solution to this problem is to just simply get a screwdriver and you want to place your screwdriver here and what this is going to do is going to elevate your hammer, okay? And then like that. You just pull out the nail. It came out really, really fast actually. I'd put no pressure on it. But yes, that's how you do it. Super simple. You don't damage your nail or your wood and done deal. With this next one, I have some really long nails in some really thin wood. Usually most people, they hammer the side and they make the nail hide into the wood like that. That's actually the wrong way. It doesn't actually bend in properly. And not only that, it's actually a little bit dangerous. Like it can catch on to all kinds of things. A solution to that is to actually just get some pliers. So what you do is you want to bend the tip, right? Now it's time to hammer it in. Now it is not so dangerous and it's not going to hurt anybody and it's safely in its little wood bed. Huh? Very good, right? Yes, done there. So sometimes you may want to tie some things together with some metal wire. When you do that, it can be a little bit frustrating because you can't really get a tight tie. I'm going to teach you a way to make it really, really tight and you don't have to put any effort into it. Wrap the wire around the wood like this and I want to give it one twist like that. Cut that so it's even. And then I'm just going to poke the wire into the power drill like this and do that and it does nothing because why? I didn't put it in properly. Okay, so once you've got the wire in there, don't forget to tighten it. It's easier to screw like this and it can chop it off like that. Actually, that was not supposed to happen, but hey, it did and I don't have to cut it now, so even better. That's all there is to it. There's not much gap here and it is super secure and now my wood is not going to be loose and flying everywhere. Those of you who hate cleaning bathrooms, like me, I really hate cleaning bathrooms because it's really annoying to get all the, the grime off the tiles. Anyway, so I'm going to teach you a way to make your life a whole lot easier. I have my mason jar lid and I have a heavy duty scrub sponge. First thing you want to do is you want to glue your heavy duty scrub sponge onto your lid. Now I just got to cut off the excess sponge around the lid like that. Glue a bolt to the inside of the lid. Place into the drill, tighten it up. This my friends is a very very clever idea to clean all the stuff or crap <laughs> off your tiles in the bathroom or whatever. All right, so I'm putting some cleaning product on my sponge and now I'm just gonna go clean away in the little grooves here. Very satisfying. Now, I know you don't see a difference because it's already cleaner. <laughs> okay, but you get the gist. It makes it a lot easier than doing it with your hands. This is an interesting one. Okay, so say you're in the dark and you need to fix something and you don't have a torch 
um, and all you have is your phone. So as you can see, the torch from the phone is very, very glary and can be quite painful on the eyes, especially if you're in a dark place like this. So a great way to diffuse that light is to actually use an eggshell. Now I've cracked open an eggshell the best way I could. I mean it's not the nicest cutlar but never mind. All you have to do is you just stick it on with some tape and then this way you've got a little torch light that is not so harsh on your eyes in the dark. So this is the torch with no egg. This is the phone with the egg. The one with the eggshell is nice and diffused and easy on the eye, whereas in the other one without the egg is very blinding. To the point where I can't even see where I'm looking right now. <laughs> Now, as you can see, I have a, a very drippy tap right here, and it's very annoying. You can hear it. Listen. Yeah, imagine that halfway through the night when you're trying to sleep. That drove me batshit crazy. Anyway, a really great solution to stop the dripping whilst you're waiting for the plumber to come and fix the tap properly is to actually just use some string. You've got to tie the string around the faucet. Then you want to place the string at the drippy part so that you don't hear the dripping. Quick solution, but make sure you get a plumber to fix it properly because you don't want to be wasting water, right? So everybody's going crazy about these IKEA bags and they're repurposing it to all kinds of different things like smaller bags or really high-end bags, which I really don't understand, but doesn't matter. So I'm gonna jump on the bag wagon and show you how to make an apron out of a IKEA bag. So of course you can use this apron to do a lot of things like painting or gardening or some DIY handy stuff. So first thing you want to do is you want to cut down all the corners. I've cut my bag open so now I can make my apron shape okay so I'm gonna show you where I'm going to cut. So time to start cutting! So there you go, I've cut my apron out. It's looking just like an apron should, I guess. So now I just gotta try it on. Ta-da! Amazing, right? Maybe Balenciaga can get some new ideas. And we've come to the end of yet another episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you didn't already know, I've started designing our own merchandise. Go check it out at tandemmerch.com. And we've put some stuff up on sale, baby. So maybe you'll find something you like. Go check it out. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at rjt99. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you get notified every time a video comes out. Or you can download the free ClickNoak app to watch most of our videos before they hit YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Mwah! Ding!